Hello everyone, this is Jason from Primetime Aquatics. In this video, I've got a product review for you and that is the Zis Brine Shrimp Hatchery. I'm going to go over my initial impressions. I'm going to talk about how to set it up. We're going to talk about brine shrimp and why it's been so important in our fish room and why I think it's important for any fish keeper, especially if they're breeding fish. Hope you enjoy the video. Appreciate you being here. So from the outset, I do want to mention that we did not pay for any of this equipment. This was sent to us by Aquarium Co-op. Corey, thank you very much for sending it along. He sent it to us to do some testing and evaluation. So we're going to unbox it. We're going to do just that. We're also going to talk about why brine shrimp is so incredibly important in our fish room and why if you're thinking about breeding fish, brine shrimp is definitely something that you should consider to greatly increase the number of fry that survive. So what do we have here? Uh, one, we've got some airline. We've got some Fritz salt that we're going to need for our brine shrimp. Fritz is a channel sponsor of ours. Uh, we've got some aquarium. Uh, we've got some aquarium co-op brine shrimp eggs, three and a half ounces. Uh, this is a nice bit of brine shrimp. Sometimes the problem is when you go on the internet, either you get a lot more than you need or not nearly enough. So this is a nice, decent size. We also have and this is kind of cool. This is a bad uh, USB powered air pump, and it's going to be small enough to run this system, but not so big where we are overwhelming this system. So that's what we have here. If we open up the box, we have the lid. We have the brine shrimp hatchery. By the way, I kind of opened this up already, but uh, if you get it, it will come in a nicer package. More things will be wrapped. Uh, as part of this, you get a thermometer, which is going to be pretty important. We have a, a valve that's going to allow us to get the brine shrimp out when we're done hatching. We were also sent this little guy here, this is an air stone that can go at the bottom of our, our, our rigid tube that we've got. And then this thing here is going to allow us to attach more air lines so that we can get the brine shrimp out of the bottom later. I'll show you how that all works in a second. The other thing that's in the box is this rigid tube that's going to go in. And then of course we've got the stand. So that's what we have. Now, here's how we set this thing up. So we've got our stand. Uh, what's going to happen here is this little valve is going to screw right into the bottom here. And this is going to really control, I should probably do this on camera, right? That would be helpful. So this little valve is going to screw right in the bottom here. And this is going to help control the amount of flow that we get when we're trying to release the, the newly hatched live baby brine out of here. So this just kind of sits in here just like, yep, just like this. And this is going to hold about two liters. So that's quite a bit. If you don't need that much, just don't fill it up quite as, as much with, with water. And again, I'm going to show you how to do that in a moment. All right. Now, this lid is kind of interesting because you've got a few things going on here. One, you've got a hole where we can put our thermometer so we can make sure that our environment is roughly right around 82 degrees. This one right here, this is going to be where the air tube goes. And this larger one, for us, it's not a big deal because we heat our fish room. It's like 82 degrees down here right now, so it's very, very warm. But if you don't have a fish room that is 82 degrees, you're going to want to get this thing to around 80 to 82. And to do that, you can put a small heater right through the top and heat this system, and then we'll keep the brine strip right where they need to be. We're not going to use that feature because we don't need it. So this is just going to go right here on the top just like that. The thermometer, which by the way comes fairly well protected in the box, which is pretty cool. Uh, this is going to slide right in here. The one thing that is in this thing that I did not point out that I need to get out of here is there's a little O-ring, a little red O-ring. I'm pretty sure you're not going to be able to see it on camera, but yeah, it, trust me, it's there. And this thing is going to just slide right over so that when we put our thermometer in, it doesn't fall all the way through. So it can just sit in here just like this. Okay, so we have that. The other thing that we're going to attach to the lid is this rigid airline tube. But before we do, we're going to need that handy dandy air stone that I seem to have lost. Here it is. So we've got our air stone. Here's our rigid tubing. This thing is just going to slide right in just like that. And you can open this up a little bit. It's adjustable to get more or less air going through. All right, so now that we've got this all set up, this is going to go right into the bottom right here where you've got your other little notch. So that will fit in just like that. So now what we have on our lid is we've got our thermometer and we also have our rigid air line that's going to supply the air. And this will just sit in 
just like that. Okay, we also have our valve on the bottom. The next thing that we can do is we're going to need a little bit of airline. And the reason for that, at least the way I'm setting it up here, is that we're gonna want an easy way to make sure that we can get the brine shrimp out of the bottom part down here and into some kind of thing to hold it so that when we're feeding our fish, we can do that. So the way that that's gonna happen is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut a piece of this. I'll be right back. Okay, I needed some scissors. So we're gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna go ahead and cut this thing just about this much, just like that. And this is gonna slide right onto the end of this valve. And then this part is gonna go into the, the drain down at the bottom. All right, so now I've got this thing. It's kind of wedged in here. I think it'll be good enough. I don't think it's gonna leak or anything. And then we're gonna take a little bit more and I'm just gonna go ahead and cut a little bit for the other side and put that on here. And I'll show you this up close in a second. And so now what this thing looks like is, let me go ahead and turn this a little bit over here. All right, so now what I've got is I've got the valve underneath and as I open that, it's going to allow the brine shrimp to flow through this part of the tube and when I open this part, the brine shrimp will then come the rest of the way out. So that's pretty much the setup. Now the last thing we have to do, and I don't necessarily need this part because I have air going throughout the fish room, but if you don't, as many people probably do not, this little air pump here is going to do the trick where now what we can do is run this thing and so it comes with a little plug. It also comes with the USB. So if you've already got an outlet, lately they make more and more outlets where it has the USB in addition to plugs. You might not need this part, but if you do, you can just plug it in just like that. Pretty nice long cord, maybe about three or four feet or so. We can go ahead and take more airline tubing. So let me go ahead and demonstrate here for you. So I went ahead and I cut a little bit of airline tubing that I am going to attach to the pump and then when this is resting on the top, now I have the airline tubing that's gonna to go to the top just like this. And for the most part, we're ready to go. And so now what we have to do is we're gonna go ahead and get the brine shrimp set up. We're gonna let this go for 24 hours. We're gonna come back and we're gonna see what it looks like. All right, so at this point, I went ahead and I filled it up with two liters of water. When it comes to the water, I don't do anything to the water, except I try to make sure, at least out of the tap, it's right around 80 degrees or so. I don't measure it with a thermometer. I basically feel it with my fingers, and if it feels like a little warmer than room temperature, I'm pretty happy. So it's approximately 80 degrees already. Now, one of the things that we're going to do is I'm not gonna leave it here. I'm actually gonna put this in light. Uh, one of the things that brine shrimp require, at least, I think it hatches better when there is visible light in the area on the on the brine shrimp hatchery. And of course, if you don't have a heater, one of the things that you can do to heat this up and not have to use a heater internally is put a light bulb, a traditional light bulb next to this thing. And that should keep it a little bit warmer than room temperature and get that into the low 80s, 80 to 82 degrees. So that's the first thing. Next thing, we're gonna go ahead and add salt. Now, when it comes to the salt, Generally speaking, you want to use about well, about one and two thirds tablespoons of salt per liter. So we're going to be right around three and a half tablespoons for the two liters that we have in here. I'm not super worried about being exact for us. And by the way, I've done a brine shrimp hatchery video in the past where we did a DIY thing and I go over all this as well. And you can see it there. But I'm not super super worried about having it be the exact measurement, but for us, right around three and a half tablespoons is gonna work. So I have my little measuring device here. And the nice thing about this Fritz salt is, and I'm gonna make a little bit of a mess, so be it, I'll clean it up later. It's very fine sand, or very fine salt. So it's not like the big rock crystal salt. Maybe I'm gonna go ahead this time and Instead of making a big mess, let's go ahead and just take the top off and not be lazy about the situation. So right around three and a half, that looks pretty good. We'll wipe off this other stuff that just kind of spread everywhere when I was being lazy. And so here, we're gonna go ahead and this salt will eventually dissolve. Right now it's towards the bottom. 
but we'll go ahead and get this cranked up a little bit. By the way, this pump is extraordinarily quiet, which is good. Uh, that's gonna make our lives a little bit easier, especially if this is in an area where you want it to be a little bit more quiet. Now, if you happen to be someone who has a little bit softer water with a lower pH, this is a step I don't have to do, but I highly recommend if you've got water that's around neutral, slightly less, I usually put a pinch of baking powder in this thing for two liters, and I mean just a pinch, just a little bit, drop it in, and that's it. Now for us, we luck out because our pH is right around an eight to an 8.2, so I really don't have to do that step. But again, if you've got water around neutral with softer water, a pinch of baking soda is certainly going to help you. The next thing we have to do, and the final thing, is add the brine shrimp. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And again, what we wanna do here is about one teaspoon per liter. So I've got about a teaspoon here. We're gonna go ahead and pour that in. I'm gonna do one more. And so here we've got our next teaspoon. In it goes. And that's really about it. Brine shrimp is really, really easy. Uh, to make. And so the last thing we're going to do, and I'm going to kind of do this off camera, is I have to go into the back part of our basement, and I'm going to put this in front of an incandescent light. That's super important to have that visible light. It does, in my opinion, help with the hatch rates. So we're going to do that. We're going to come back in 24 hours. It takes about 18, to, depending on the temperature, somewhere between 18 to 36 hours to hatch. At about 80 to 82 degrees, I find that somewhere around 20 to 24 hours, we get a lot of brine shrimp, and we should be in good shape. So let's go ahead see what this looks like in 24 hours all right so here we have the brine shrimp it has been 24 hours since we last saw it we're going to go ahead and i will show you how to remove the brine shrimp it's looking good i think we're going to have a good hatch rate let's go take a closer look all right so here we have the brine shrimp as i mentioned already it's still kind of swimming around what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to let this settle now it's going to take a few minutes so what i generally like to do is i will stop the air as we can see here I will just set this aside and usually what I do is I feed all my other fish which usually takes about 10 or 15 minutes. In the meantime, this will all these organisms will settle to the bottom here and then we're going to be able to use this to kind of drain off the live baby brine into a cup and then we can use a pipette to feed all the tanks that require the live baby brine. A lot of people have asked us in the past, hey, what can I do to get my fish to breed? This is one of my secret weapons when I want fish to breed. If they are small enough as adults, I will feed them this. So all of our shell dwellers, our guppies, our platies, our mollies, our cyprochromus, any type of uh, small cichlid like rams, apistos, uh, pelvic acromus or crebensis, this is all a really great food for them. Even my rock dwelling Lake Tanganyikan cichlids like Juliatochromus or the Neil Amprologus lelupi, they love this as well. So there's a lot of fish in our fish room that get this. Our Neil Amprologus brichardi would be yet another one that like this. Even the adults like to snack on the live baby brine. So let's talk a little bit about the cost while we're waiting. This brine shrimp hatchery is around $45. The brine shrimp itself, that three and a half ounces, is around 20 bucks. That black tubing was around $5. The pump was around nine bucks. And I think, oh, the salt. The salt was around $4. And I think this little valve was like maybe a buck. So I, when I added it up, it was somewhere just under, if you included a heater, it would be right around $100. If you don't need the heater and you're gonna use the incandescent light bulb, you're looking at probably 85 bucks for this setup. And if you're into breeding fish and you wanna keep your fish healthy, this is a wonderful investment for your fish room or for, especially if you have multiple tanks and if you're gonna be breeding, this is a great food to feed your fry. If you wanna increase your fry survival rates, this is a great way to do it. So I wanted to show you this real quick. This is kind of what's happening. You can see all the live baby brine is settling. It's been about five minutes or so. And I think we're pretty much at that point where we can go ahead and start draining off the live baby brine and feeding it. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we are gonna go ahead and drain our live baby brine hatchery. And so we have the nozzle right here or the little, the hose that I attached. We're gonna open up the valve and allow the live baby brine that has settled to the bottom over the last five or 10 minutes. And that's gonna go ahead and drain right into our little collection point right here. And this is gonna be more than enough to feed the vast majority of our tanks. When we do this twice a day, like I mentioned, we do this once in the morning and once at night, 
So all of our fish that are having fry and all of our small adults will get a nice nutritious live baby brine meal. So in this part here, I have just taken a pipette. I removed some of the live baby brine from the container, and now I'm just squirting it directly into the tank. I know some people worry about what's going to happen to their tank if they squirt a little bit of that brine mixture into a tank. With the volumes that we're dealing with here, and that's tanks 10 gallons and above, with the types of fish that we're keeping, they're not particularly salt sensitive and we're diluting the little bit of brine with that huge volume of water it works out fine like I said I've been doing it this way for years without any issues and you can see here both the Maltese and our Cyprochromus and here we've got some Brevis shell dwellers and they all really enjoy it so again if you're interested in more information about the brine shrimp hatchery I will put that down in the description below if you want to see the DIY video I did I'll put that in the upper right hand corner I appreciate you being here Thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, share, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.